So yeah, I'm a, a PhD student in neuroscience at Columbia, um, but this is work I did with Brad in the neuromorphics group at Sandia uh, on using um, or a model of sequence learning and consolidation using on-chip plasticity um, on the Luigi chip. So uh, in recent years, uh, as you all know, neuromorphic chips have started to provide more and more capability to um, flexibly handle on-chip plasticity, meaning changes to synaptic connection strengths uh, using prog programmable local learning rules. And what uh, we'd like to demonstrate here is an instance of using uh, on-chip plasticity to solve a useful problem, a useful learning problem, namely um, the problem of learning to make predictions based on temporal structure in an environment. So in particular, we're going to consider kind of a simple um, environment in which stimuli are presented to a system in an online fashion and try to make use of learned temporal structure um, in how those stimuli are presented uh, to make predictions online about the future um, and do all of this on uh, the Luigi chip. So uh, more concretely, uh, the kind of world we're gonna be working in is a sort of toy environment uh, consisting of a finite set of stimuli corresponding to um, patterns of input to a network of spiking neurons. Um, and they'll be presented in streaming fashion uh, in a set of stereotyped sequences. So in this example, there are four distinct sequences, each of length four that occur in this environment, um, corresponding to patterns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. And what we'd like to be able to do is make predictions um, represented as activity patterns in a separate population of spiking neurons, um, predictions about what the upcoming stimulus will be when a current stimulus is being presented. So if we're seeing pattern one, we wanna predict that we're gonna see two next, if we're seeing two, we wanna predict that we're seeing three next, um, and so on, according to the sequential structure that's been observed previously. And so in our, we're, we're motivated uh, by the hippocampus, a region of the brain implicated in sequence learning and memory. And a proposed mechanism for how this kind of learning is conducted in the hippocampus is spike timing dependent plasticity or SDDP uh, in which synaptic connections between pairs of neurons are modified when those two neurons both spike um, and the sign of the modification depends on the relative timing of the spikes. Um, Loihi provides the ability to program a synaptic plasticity rule that implements essentially STDP um, using exponentially decaying eligibility traces that are computed um, and stored at each neuron site on the chip um, using a, a formula like this. Um, and so like what, what something we could try to do is just you know, take a population of neurons with all to all recurrent connectivity and um, use an STDP learning rule at each synapse in this recurrent network and just let that learning rule run as streaming inputs are presented um, to this network of spiking neurons. And this will have the effect of strengthening synapses that connect neurons, which are active in consecutive sequence elements. Um, so then if we probe you know, what the network does when you kind of go through that exercise, um, what happens is if you, you know, stimulate the neurons corresponding to the first pattern in one of these sequences, the network will rehearse um, the rest of the sequence. So if you stimulate, you know, pattern one, it'll, um, it'll go through, it'll, on the next time step, it'll activate the neurons in pattern two, and then the next time step in pattern three, um, and so on. Um, so in some sense, it's kind of making predictions about, you know, future sequence elements. Um, the reason this, this kind of beha network behavior is, is not quite what we are after, um, and this is kind of the crux of, I guess, this talk, is that, um, so the learning rule, STDP, is storing this kind of predictive structure um, about, temp you know, consecutive temporal relationships between stimuli in these recurrent weights in a population of neurons. But ultimately, uh, we, in an online setting, what we'd like is for the network to be able to continue receiving streaming environmental inputs and use a different neural population to encode the predictions um, so that the representation of the predictions doesn't interfere with ongoing learning in the kind of original population. 
But since our STDP learning rule is storing the structure in these recurrent weights in the blue population, um, we need some way to transfer that learned knowledge into a different set of synapses with, 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 while respecting the kind of the locality constraints of the neuromorphic hardware. Um, so to tackle this, we're again taking inspiration from the brain. Uh, kind of a much studied feature of the hippocampus is this phenomenon of replay in which recently experienced sequences of hippocampal neural activity are rehearsed during rest or sleep. And this is known to be important to the consolidation of memories into other brain regions where they're stored kind of longer term. Um, so in our system, we can implement a version of replay in order to achieve the sort of weight transfer that I had described. So in an offline period where the network is detached from the environment, um, we can randomly reactivate recently experienced neural activity patterns, causing the blue network to kind of re rehearse observed sequences as I showed before, um, and then if we do a little trick, if we clamp activity in a separate network, the, the red network, to match that of the blue, and also use an STDP learning rule at the synapses connecting the two populations, um, then after enough iterations, the, the blue network to red network weights will encode the same information as the original recurrent weights uh, in the blue network. So to kind of recap that quickly, um, we now have a sort of two-phase learning algorithm. Um, in, in on, there's an online phase in which STDP in the recurrent weights of the network that receives direct sensory inputs learns the predictive structure or the sequential structure of the environment. Um, and then in an offline phase, which need only take place every now and then, this structure can be copied into another set of weights that allows a different population to take responsibility for encoding with spikes the predictions about future stimuli. And now when we return to the online phase, the system can continue to uh, learn new temporal associations while uh, making predictions in this other population based on its past experience. Um, there's a bunch of implementation details that make this more complicated than I uh, just described, but one to highlight is um, kind of to, to make this work, we want different synapses to be learning during the two different network phases. And on Loihi, plasticity rules define that a synapse remain the same throughout the life of a simulation, so we can't directly turn plasticity on or off at will. Um, but effectively, we actually can, because uh, what we what Louis he allows us to do is use a global uh, gl these global modulatory factors that are baked into the plasticity rule here. We're calling it R, and we can use that as an indicator variable to tell us which phase the network is in, so we can sort of toggle which synapses we're allowing to be changed at any given time. Um, so when we put up this all together, the upshot is that it works as, as we like it to with the network uh, successfully activating predicted future activity patterns uh, in, a, in this red population, even while it's receiving these online streaming inputs from the environment. And one kind of nice capability we get for free um, from this model, which I can't go into too much detail about, is the an ability to make predictions at different time scales by adjusting spiking thresholds of the neurons in the red population. Um, can talk about that more if anyone's interested. Um, but yeah, just to quickly recap, um, I guess what, what we've shown. So the, you know, the main ingredients here were the use of an STDP learning rule in a recurrent network of spiking neurons on Luihi to um, learn about sequential relationships in, a, um, in an environment with streaming inputs. Um, then we used a re introduced a replay-based consolidation approach to transfer that learned structure um, to another set of synapses, allowing predictions to be made online uh, without interfering with ongoing learning. Uh, and getting this to work requires the use of distinct network phases, which can be implemented on the chip using these global modulatory factors that are baked into the uh, synaptic plasticity rules. And just kind of one sort of quick higher level comment um, that might be a, a generalizable takeaway from this sort of this sort of work or this exercise um, is that uh, kind of even solving a relatively simple learning problem like this requires a bit of thought about how to um, design the right circuit structure to harness the capabilities of the underlying synaptic plasticity rule, in this case, SCDP, um, to do what we want. So kind of a, there's a comp symbiosis of some you know, clever circuit design and the plasticity rules that's needed to actually get a system that performs sort of some useful learning function that 
that it can execute um, in the con in an online fashion. Um, yeah, so that is what I've got, and I'm happy to take take questions.